Are you looking to increase student engagement in your online lessons? Of course you are. When schools were shut down, most of us were told that online teaching consisted of recording videos and uploading worksheets. The result was hours and hours planning each lesson, yet minimal student engagement. Oftentimes, students didn't even watch our videos or complete our lessons. In this video, I'll show you how you can use Google Slides to create online math lessons that are hands-on and collaborative, all with minimal prep time. First, I'll show you what a Google Slides math lesson looks like. Then, we'll look at how you can create your own interactive math lessons with Google Slides. Finally, I'll show you where to go to learn more or to download completed Google Slides lessons that you can use in your classroom tomorrow. If you're familiar with Google Slides, you know it wasn't actually designed to make interactive lessons. It was actually designed as a presentation program, much like PowerPoint. But many educators have figured out that by sharing slides with students, we can create interactive lessons that they can work on independently or in groups. Now, these activities work really well in tandem with using breakout groups in Google Meets. And if you'd like to learn more about that, there's another video on our channel on using Google Meet breakout groups. In addition to being a great tool for interactive learning, another nice thing about Google Slides is that it's part of the Google suite of tools, which are practically free for educators, and which integrate really easily into Google Classroom. So let's take a look at three examples of interactive math lessons designed in Google Slides. Uh, this first activity we'll take a look at is always, sometimes, never equations. Uh, the idea here is that we give students an equation. Uh, in this case, it has box as a variable, but uh, there's another version where we have x as the variable, depending on how old the students are. Um, and they first need to prove by calculation, and then they need to prove by reasoning. So to prove by calculation with a variable, first they figure out what value are we going to calculate for. So let's say we choose 3. Then we evaluate for that value and try to get to a point where we show that something's clearly true or clearly false. Like 6 equals 6 shows it's clearly true. I also give students uh, some symbols over here. So we have a bank of symbols. So in case they wanted to use the not equal to or the division sign or the box variable, it's can be hard for them to find those, so um, I put them there so they can copy and paste into the equation. Then the next step is to prove by reasoning. So once they determine is it always true, sometimes true, or never true, they have to tell me why. Why is this going to always be true or never true? Um, they shouldn't just explain their calculation in words. Um, you know, in this case, we're explaining that two copies of something is always the same as adding that thing to itself, um, and they can also show their reasoning with visual representations. Um, so one of the cool things about slides is that we can do, do shapes. Like everything that you have in Google Drawing is available in slides. So if they wanted to show how you know, a box plus a box is the same as two copies of box, they could do something like that. And another handy trick that I've found is using tables. Um, and this is particularly useful if I'm working with fractions. Like it's pretty easy to, to take a table and if I wanted to show, you know, three fourths, select three of these boxes and color them in to make a fraction bar of three fourths. This lesson is called Multiple Representations of Functions and it involves uh, basically a word problem um, or story form and asks students to show in multiple forms as a growing shape in a table, an equation, and as a graph. Um, so here's the story form. We give them the scenario, then they show it as growing shapes. And just like we looked at before, we can in insert squares and, and create these, these growing shapes. Uh, they can input the values in the table. They can show it as an equation. And finally, on the graph, um, this is where I was talking about how you might want to give students uh, things on the side they can drag. So we give them um, all of these pictures so they don't have to draw all the circles or, or show the line. They can just take the circles and then 
you know, drag the line and and show the graph. And then here they, they reflect on each situation. And then again, in this lesson, there, there are three versions. Um, and some of them, you know, we'll give them the graph and they have to come up with the story just to switch things up and show that they can, they can take something from a story form, turn it into a table, or we can give them the table and they create the story, they create the graph. Um, but basically that's how the multiple representations lesson works. And this here is the exploring standards activity, which is uh, possibly my favorite. It's also kind of the most outside the box. So it's different from um, anything that I've seen in most math classes. And the way it works is that we actually give students a standard. So we're explaining here what a standard is. And, um, and then we give them the name of the standard, the text of the standard. Um, and then they start by breaking it down. So they're going to separate the standard into parts to make it more easily understandable. Um, then they're going to analyze what's the purpose of the standard, how does it help them in the outside world, uh, what's a question you could ask somebody to figure out if they understand this standard, what foundations do they need uh, before they could attempt this standard, um, and we have them use Achieve the Core as a resource so they're not just coming up with this off the top of their head. Achieve the Core kind of breaks down those standards in this way. It's designed as a teacher tool, but it actually can be really helpful for students. Um, and then finally, they have to come up with a way that they can teach this standard to younger students. So as you can see, there are several ways that you can use Google Slides to make interactive lessons, whether it's just having uh, text boxes or interactive graphs and tables and um, you know creative ways to get students to interact with the content. Uh, now let's look at uh, how you would actually design uh, one of these lessons for your own content. If you're already used to working with Google Slides, making interactive lessons will just take a few extra steps. First, we'll create a slideshow that will be the background for our slides. This way we can set things up that students won't be able to edit. Next, we'll create our student slides by adding in text boxes and creating some resources on the side if we want them to be able to drag anything into the slide. And finally, we'll look at different ways to share the slides with your students. So the first step is to create a new slideshow that's going to serve as our background. So this is how I do this and choose create. As you can see, it opens up as a new blank presentation. And from there, I'm going to create the background that I want for my slide, the part that is not going to be editable by students. Uh, in this case, I set a trim. Uh, for the background, I put a little image of a scale. Um, I created all these boxes here, okay, and this box here. Um, but this, these are just really for decoration. They're not actually going to be entering text here. Um, same here. I put the value goes here. Um, but then anything that I want students to put information in is going to come in the next step. So once I'm comfortable with the background, I'm actually going to go up to my file menu, choose download, and I'm going to download as a JPEG or a PNG. Basically, I'm exporting this as an image. And once I've saved all of my background slides as JPEGs, now I go back and I create another new Google slide document. Uh, the first thing I need to do is change the layout. Um, this comes up initially as 16 by 9. Um, I want 4 by 3. Uh, if you wanted, you could even make it like a regular page of a document and make it 8 by 11. So really whatever shape you want, um, but it, it should match. Um, as you can see, like if I were to go and add the background image now, first I'll get rid of these boxes. I come up here to change my background image, choose image, browse, and I'm going to choose that background that I just created. Um, and as you can see, it stretches it out to fit the page. Um, but if I want it to look like it did on the background slide, I'm going to go to this standard 4x3, which is what I had it set up. This is kind of like a standard presentation. Um, and now I'm going to add in all of my text boxes. So here I'm going to put a text box and I'm going to enter my number sentence. 
Um, I'm going to enter a text box here where they're going to choose the value. Copy that and put another one here. And then I'm going to insert a text box here where they enter their equation. Um, I want the equation to be centered, so I'll set that up in the settings. Um, and then I'm also going to give them a circle. Make it transparent. Give it a nice color and make it a little thicker. So then when they're ready to choose, is it always true, sometimes true, never true, they can just slide the circle over there. Now, another neat feature is that we can just have them put an image here. So, you know, I could have them use this text box like I set it up and, and simplify the equation that way. But sometimes math, you just want it to be written on a page, whether it's simplifying equation, whether it's drawing a visual model. Uh, and Google Slides allows you to insert an image from the camera. So here I put my equation on a pad, hold it up to my camera, and boom, there's my work right there. Now another thing I like to do is sometimes give them some you know, shapes or symbols over on this side, like if I wanted to um, give them a not equal to sign, uh, first I would create a text box, would insert a special character, find not equal to, and now that's over um, on the side for them that they can just copy and move it in. Um, also, if I'm having them do graphing, I might insert an arrow for them. So I'll go arrow, put that over here. And by default, it has an arrow on one side. If I want the other side, I come up here and set the line start. So now I insert some things just to save them a little time. The students might not know how to find these. So anything that I think they might need to complete the slide, I can put in the sidebar for them. So now that my slide is set up and ready to go, the next thing to do is to share it. Um, the, the simplest way is to use the share button. Um, I can just put people's email addresses here and they will get uh, access to it. But everybody is going to have access to the same document. There's a couple ways that are a little better to make sure that everybody gets their own copy or that you make a copy for a group. So one way I like to do this is with an activity sheet. So if I'm going to be doing this as part of a real-time lesson with students, I make up this sheet. This has links to all my breakout rooms. So the students are in group one, group two, group three, group four, and I also make four copies of the activity, and each copy has a link to it, and then that group will use that copy. Another way is if I want to have a copy for each person, I create a special link where what I do is I take the link to the Google, whether it's a Google Doc or Google Slide, and at the end of it, it's going to say like, edit and some other letters, I delete all that and replace it with the word copy. And if you, uh, if you do that with a Google Doc, watch what happens when I click on it, the person will be prompted to make their own copy. So this is kind of a quick, easy way to have everyone get their own copy. Uh, the problem with that method, though, is then you're not going to necessarily have access to their copy unless they submit it. Um, but it works really well um, for for doing an activity as part of a, a class or a workshop. So the next option is to create a Google Classroom activity. So here I am on my home screen. I'm going to go to Classwork and create a new lesson. Um, and I can assign this to all students. Or if I wanted to have it as a group activity, I can make several assignments and then just assign that to the students who are in that group. But in this case, I'll assign it to everyone. I'm going to add a file from Google Drive. I'll select my always, sometimes, never proofs. Insert that. And over here it says students can view file, which means they can't do anything to it. I'm going to go down and say make a copy for each student. 
So now when I assign this, it's gonna create a separate slideshow for every student. They can all do it independently and I'm gonna be able to see all the work they do and I can assign uh, points to them right here in Google Classroom. So if you like the idea of using these Google Slide lessons with your students, but you don't want to reinvent the wheel and make everything from scratch, check out our Teachers Pay Teachers page. We have activities up there for a number of topics, uh, both print resources and digital Google Slides resources. Uh, we're adding more every day. If you're interested in learning more about hands-on math and online learning, visit our blog. You'll find activities about uh, planning interactive online lessons, about visual models, word problems, fractions, pretty much any topic regarding online learning or interactive math. And you'll find similar videos on our YouTube channel. So don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. If you'd like to go deeper, you can sign up for an upcoming session on one of these topics at our workshops page. And finally, to stay up to date with our latest videos, blog posts, workshops, and anything else happening with Room to Discover, sign up for a free newsletter. Thank you for watching and thank you for giving your students the Room to Discover.